If you guys want to win a £25 Xbox or PlayStation gift card in my April giveaway, all you need to do is leave a like on the video, leave a comment down below, and subscribe to my channel if you're new around here. Best of luck and enjoy the video. Hey guys, Heath, we're here, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys my World Cup predictions. I know it's a little bit of a different type of video to normal, nothing to do with FIFA, but with the World Cup starting in Russia in 74 days when I'm recording this video, and the hype around the World Cup really starting to build, I thought what's all the best sign than to do a video like this? I did one for the Euros two years ago. I wasn't that accurate back then. I I think I predicted Germany would win and in the end they went out in the semi-finals but hopefully this year my predictions can be a little bit more accurate. I'm going to try and predict all the group winners and uh, obviously the results in the knockout stages and the eventual winner. I actually saw Vizza do a video on this a couple of days ago so he kind of inspired me to do this. I'll leave a link down below to his video if you want to go and check that out and be sure to let me know in the comment section which team you're going to be supporting in the World Cup. I'm going to be supporting England and let me know who you think is going to win at the World Cup. Also if you guys do enjoy don't forget to leave a like. Let's try and smash 200 on this video. And if you do want to see more kind of in real life football type of videos rather than just FIFA stuff all the time on my channel, leave a comment down below and show your support with that like as well. But I hope you guys do enjoy and without further ado, let's go on into it. So we're obviously going to start off with the group stages. We've got eight different groups, A to H, and I'm going to predict the winners and the team that will come in the second place as well. So we start off with group A and that includes the hosts, Russia. We've also got Uruguay who I think will top the group. They've got Cavani and Suarez up front two of the most lethal strikers in world football right now. Godin, Jimenez, Muslera, some solo players in the defence. Uh, they've got Torreya, I believe that's his name, the midfielder, playing in the Serie A. They've got a lot of good players. I think they will top the group. They're the strongest team there. I think Saudi Arabia won't clinch second. They may come third or fourth, but they just don't have as good a team as Russia and Egypt. Egypt have got Salah, who's one of the best players in this group, and this season's been one of the best players in the world, but uh, I'm not sure if he's going to be able to do enough to pull them through when Russia have got a very good, well-rounded team. They don't have as good individuals, uh, they don't have Salah, but they do have the likes of Cochrane, Shatov, Jagwev, and just a well-rounded team. They have a lot of good players, uh, and obviously with home advantage as well, the home support, they can be used to the environment. Egypt, obviously, uh, is, a, is a much hotter country. Country. I'm not sure how their players will cope in a colder environment. Egypt do have a great player with Salah, but apart from him, they've got some, some decent players like El Nani, but I think Russia just have an overall better team and they have the home advantage. So I'm going to go with them as the second place team. Next up, we've got Group B comprising Portugal, Spain, Morocco and Iran. Obviously, Portugal won the Euros in 2016, Spain won the World Cup in 2010 and the Euros in 2008 and 2012. So as of recent years, they've probably been the most successful international team. We've also got Morocco and Iran. Neither of them, I think, are going to compete with Portugal and Spain. Probably Morocco will come third, Iran fourth. I think Spain will top the group just because in every position, pretty much, they've got world-class players, apart from maybe as a striker. But they don't really play with a striker. They play more with a false nine. But obviously, they've got David Silva, Thiago, Iniesta, Busquets. Uh, they've got Isco, so many world-class players in the midfield. In the defence, they've got De Gea, Pique, Ramos, Alba, uh, they've got Carvalho as well, just all over the pitch. They've got amazing players, so I think they will top the group, followed by Portugal, and then Morocco and Iran are probably going to go out. Next up in Group C, we've got France, Australia, Peru, and Denmark, and I think this one's pretty easy to predict. France should comfortably win the group. They've got such a great team with so many young players as well. In coming years, they're just going to get better and better. They've got the likes of Martial, Coleman, Mbappe, Dembele, even Pogba and Griezmann, they're still pretty young and they've got loads and loads of other great players and they're definitely going to be amongst the favourites to win the whole World Cup, not only this group. I think Denmark will probably come in second, they should on paper given they've got Eriksson who's one of the best players uh, in the entire group and even just in, in the competition as a whole, one of the best midfielders, especially this season he's been so good and he's good for Denmark too, he scored a hat-trick against Ireland. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, maybe a couple of months ago now. That was one of the last games they played to clinch qualifying. And uh, I think with him, Nikola Jorgensen, Schmeichel, they've got Sisto and Daniel Vass as well, two players who've been on really good form in La Liga this season. They've got Delaney playing in the Bundesliga. They've got some good players. I think they should come in second, at least on paper with the players they've got. Australia and Peru have quite average size. They have one or two decent players, the likes of Jefferson Farfan for Peru, and then Tim Cahill, although obviously he's really nearing the end of his career. I think he's playing for Millwall now. He has been good for them. He was one of the main reasons they qualified, but 
I just don't think they'll be able to compete with Denmark and France. In Group D, we've got Argentina, the runners-up in the last World Cup, as well as Iceland, who are a real surprise package in the Euros, obviously knocking out England, as well as Croatia and Nigeria as well. I think this one's quite a hard group to break. There's a lot of very evenly matched teams. I think at least on paper, Argentina should top it. They've got so many world-class players, obviously Messi being the standout one. Although if Messi does get injured and doesn't play, they're so, so much worse. And we saw that in qualifying. They only just scraped qualifying. They came fifth, I believe, and they had to beat uh, Ecuador away. Messi had to score a hat-trick to pull them through. Uh, so that was a the very, very close shave. They almost missed out. And it's weird with Argentina because they have so many amazing players, the likes of Aguero, Higuain, Dybala, Riccardi, Di Maria, obviously Messi, but they just don't play that well internationally. Higuain got played through on goal a couple of times in the final of the last World Cup, uh, and he, he fluffed his lines. Messi missed a few chances in the final. Uh, Dybala, who's been amazing for Juventus, hasn't really found any form for Argentina recently. Icardi, who scored like 30 goals in the Serie A this season, he's been amazing. He doesn't even get into the team now because he just hasn't been good enough. He's been dropped by the manager. So they have so many great players, they should win the group. If those players turn up and play as well as they can, or at least as well as they do for their clubs, I think they could go really far and maybe even the win, win the World Cup as a whole. But if they if they play as badly as they were in qualifying, at least kind of as a whole, I mean they had they had individuals, Messi being the standout one who played really well. But apart from him, no one really played that well. If they play as well as they can, though, I think they can go really far. But they should top the group, especially with the players they've got. And then I think Croatia will probably come in second. They've got such a good midfield with Modric, Rakitic, Kovacic, and also Brozovic. And then going forwards, they've got Kramaric and Perisic. In the defence, they've got Serna and Korluka, although they're both quite old and may have retired. I'm not too sure if they've retired from international football yet. But I think with the players they've got, they should come in second. They were good in the Euros too. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm going to put them as the second place team. That means Iceland and Nigeria will both get knocked out. I think Iceland won't be able to replicate what they did in the Euros. Uh, even though they've got good players like Sigurdsson and Goodmanson, I just don't think they'll be able to do what they did in the Euros. And uh, for that reason, I think they'll go out. And then Nigeria, they do have good players, the likes of Ian Nacho, Awobi, Musa. Uh, but uh, again, I don't think they're going to be as good as Croatia and Argentina. And for that reason, I think they're going to get knocked out as well. Next up in Group E, we've got Brazil, Switzerland, Costa Rica and Serbia. And I think this one is really obvious who's going to win. It should be Brazil with the players they've got. They really should be winning that group. So I'm going to put them as the first place team. They're one of the best teams in pretty much every single World Cup. They're always amongst the favourites. Obviously, they crashed out 7-1 in the semi-finals of the last World Cup. But they've won it more times than any other nation, I think, five times in total. And they should top that group with the players they've got. Even though Neymar may be injured for the World Cup, I think he should be back beforehand. But he may end up missing the World Cup. I'm not 100% sure. It's, we're yet to see really how his recovery goes because he got quite a bad injury a couple of weeks ago. But even without him, I think they should top the group pretty comfortably. But then we've got Switzerland, Costa Rica and Serbia. And they're all pretty evenly balanced. I think Costa Rica are probably the worst out of those teams. But they were really good in the last World Cup. They were in England's group. And I'm not too sure if they came second or third. I actually can't remember if they came above England or not. I think they may have. But they drew with England. They had Brian Ruiz who was really good. And then it was the World Cup where Keylor Navas really broke through onto the scene and Real Madrid signed him shortly afterwards. Um, but I'm not sure if they're going to carry that on into the next World Cup. I think Serbia... They're definitely up there. It's between Serbia and Switzerland, in my opinion. Switzerland obviously have Shakiri, and they were good in the uh, Euros as well. They also have Liechtensteiner. They have Real Donald and Bolo. They've got some good players, but then Serbia, I believe they have Milinkovic Savic. Um, I always get confused between Serbia and Slovakia and Croatia and all of those nations because they all have quite similar flags. But I think they have Milinkovic Savic. They have Matic as well. Um, they've got Nastasic, Kolarov. Uh, Basta, they've got some good players. I think it's between those two and it's really really hard to pick. I can't choose between them. Switzerland were really good in the Euros though and I don't seem to remember Serbia being that good. I'm not sure if they got out of the group stages or not. So I'm going to go with Switzerland. Although Serbia do have, I think they've, they've got a better team like man for man. Especially this season, they've got some players who've been on really good form, like Milinkovic Savic, but then Shakiri's been good too. I'm going to go with Switzerland just because they were better in the Euros. They, they, they were on good form then, and Serbia, I don't seem to remember doing as well. And I think Switzerland topped their group as well in qualifying. So, 
Yeah, I'm gonna go with Switzerland, although that one is quite hard. Let me know down below, who do you think will come through in second? Switzerland, Serbia, or even Costa Rica? Next up in Group F, we've got the defending champions, Germany, along with Mexico, Sweden, and South Korea. And I think this one's very easy. Everyone is gonna go with Germany as the first place team in that group. They're always gonna be amongst the favorites to win the World Cup. They're one of the best teams in the world. They have so many great players, and they've been on really good form recently. And uh, I can't see any other result other than them topping their group. Then it's between Mexico, Sweden, and South Korea. I don't think Sweden have Ibrahimovic. He retired from international football, but he's been hinting at possibly returning. If he does return, I think they could do quite well because, I mean, he has been injured for a while with United and wasn't playing for them, but he was amazing on his debut for LA Galaxy. If you guys missed that, he scored like a 45-yard volley within minutes of coming on and then scored the 90th minute winner. And he could really pull them through that, that group. Obviously, they've got Forsberg and some other good players. So if he comes back, it could be different, but I think without Ibrahimovic, Mexico will probably come second. They've got a good, well-rounded team. They've got a lot of decent players uh, just in, in most positions, whereas Sweden have uh, an amazing player in Ibrahimovic. They've got Forsberg, who's really good, but apart from him, they've got a couple of good players like John Gadetti, uh, who, who's okay. But I think Mexico, man for man, have a better team, and without Ibrahimovic, I think Sweden won't be able to compete with them. And then South Korea, I don't really think they're going to be competing with anyone in that group and will most likely come bottom. Next up is England's group, Group G. We've also got Belgium in there as well as Panama and Tunisia. But I think pretty much everyone's going to agree that it's between Belgium and England. I don't see Panama or Tunisia getting anywhere near those first and second spots. But I think Belgium will win the group. I am supporting England in the World Cup, as you would expect. But... Belgium just have so many great players. They've got De Bruyne, Hazard, Lukaku, Mertens. They've got Alderweireld, Vertonghen, Company, Courtois. Just such a solid team. In the midfield, Dembele, Nangolan. They just have an amazing team. And I could see them getting very far in this World Cup. They haven't really played that well together internationally. They've never gone that far recently in any big tournaments. But this year could be the year De Bruyne has been tearing the Premier League up. Hazard's been on good form. Lukaku's actually been on really good form in the past few weeks. And he's, he's scored a lot of goals. Mertens has been great. They just have a very, very good team. And I could definitely see them topping that group. And then England... They've been playing decently in friendlies and, and kind of in, in the qualifying stages for the World Cup. But when it comes to major tournaments recently, England just haven't been that good. So I'm going to put them a second. Uh, and then Tunisia and Panama, I don't really think they're going to get out of that group. And then to finish off, we've got Group H, which includes Colombia and Poland as the two best uh, teams there. And then we've also got Senegal and Japan. I think Colombia will top that group. They've got Hamas Rodriguez. They've got Falcao, who's been on good form recently. Uh, they've got Cuadrado. They've got Carlos Sanchez. Uh, they've got a lot of good players. I can't think of all of them, but they do have a solid team. Arias is another one in the defense who's pretty good. And I think Colombia will top that group. Poland will then probably come in second. Although Senegal do have some decent players, I think Poland will come in second. They've got Lewandowski. They've got Piszczek. They've got Glick. They've got a, a solid team. Chesney in goal as well. They've got a good back line. And then going forward, they've got one of the best strikers in the world. So I think they will come second. They could potentially come first as well. But it is between Colombia and Poland. Colombia were really good in the last World Cup. And Hamas Rodriguez and Falcao have both been on good form this season. So I think they will probably come first. But it's between Poland and Colombia for that first spot. With Senegal and Japan, in my opinion, uh, being the uh, the two weaker sides there. And I think they will drop out. So there the group stage is done. Next up we've got the round of 16. Moving on to the knockout stages. And uh, I'm not 100% sure if this is how it's going to work in real life. So for example, if Colombia come first in their group and England come second... Will they play each other or is it random? Could they play any other team that's come first in their group? I'm not 100% sure. Um, but uh, yeah, we're just going to roll with it and see how it goes. So Uruguay against Portugal. Obviously the winners of the Euros against a team with very good attacking players. Cavani and Suarez, two of the best strikers in the world. They've got good defenders too. I think man for man though, Portugal squad is better, especially in the midfield. And the fact they've got Ronaldo on top of that and they got to the, the Euros and they won the Euros last year. They got to the final of that. I think I'd lean towards Portugal, although it's quite a close game. It would probably be a really good one to watch with two uh, sides with very good attacking potential. Uh, Spain against Russia, the hosts against one of the best teams in recent years internationally. I'm going to go with Spain. Don't really see any other uh, outcome of that game. France against Croatia. I think France should win that, at least on paper with the players they've got. They're both great sides, but man for man, France do have a better squad. Uh, Argentina against Denmark. Even though Argentina are quite inconsistent... 
I don't really see any other outcome apart from an Argentina victory there. I think they'll go through and then Brazil against Mexico, two South American sides up against each other. Brazil should that win that one, even if they don't have Neymar, they should come out on top there. Germany against Switzerland, I think that one's pretty easy. Germany should comfortably win that. Belgium against Poland, I think Belgium should win that for sure. And then Colombia against England, Colombia could easily win that. England could easily win that. That would be a really hard game to predict because England, just like Argentina and just like quite a few other sides, are inconsistent. But recently, I mean, they were really good in qualifying. They won almost all their group stage games. But then in the last World Cup, I think they did the same. And they they were so lackluster in the group stages. They, they just weren't that good. And obviously, they lost to uh, Iceland in the Euros. So... It's really hard to say. I'm going to go with England as an England fan. Man for man, England squad's probably better. I mean, with the individuals, you've got Hamas Rodriguez, who's amazing, who's probably better than any English player, arguably. We're on a level with some of them. But then man for man, I think, especially defensively, England squad is better. So those are the round of 16 games. We've got Portugal, Spain, France, Argentina, England, Belgium, Germany, and Brazil going through with Uruguay, Russia, Croatia, Denmark, Colombia, Poland, Switzerland, and Mexico all dropping out. Next up, we've got the quarterfinals. Eight teams left. It's getting closer. So we start off with Portugal against France, a repeat of the final of the Euros. And this one is hard to say because although Portugal did win the final, I think France were probably a little bit better in the, in the tournament as a whole. Portugal, I think they only won one game in normal time in the whole of the tournament. I think that was in the semi-final, possibly against Croatia. They scraped through, they were third in their group in France. They were tearing teams apart, getting all the way through to the final. Um, taking nothing away, obviously, from Portugal's win. They, they obviously won the Euros, which is a great accomplishment. But I think if that game was to be played again, France would win. They have a better squad of man for man. I mean, obviously, Ronaldo plays for Portugal, which is a huge advantage. But player for player, I think France have a better squad and on paper should win, but it's hard to say. I'm going to go with France, although that one could go either way. Obviously, it went the, the, the opposite way in the final of the Euros. Next, we've got Spain against Argentina, and this one would be a really good game. I think if a good Argentina side played, if Argentina played as well as they can with the players they've got, they'd win. But if Argentina played like they have often in qualifying, they wouldn't win. But having Messi, Messi could just win the game on his own like he's done a lot for Argentina. I mean, he was so good in the last World Cup. He was player of the tournament, and... Um, I mean, yeah, it just depends if if they ha if the likes of Higuain and Aguero uh, are playing well, scoring goals. I think they could beat Spain. But if they play like they did in a lot of games in qualifying, they, they I think they just lose quite quite heavily to Spain because Spain is so consistent and have such such a good team overall, man for man. They have a better squad. Although obviously having uh, Messi, in my opinion, the best player in the world maybe even the best player of all time. I think that gives them a huge advantage. And I would like Spain to go through, but then I would also like Argentina to go through. I like a lot of players from both of these two, two teams. David Silva's one of my favorite players as a Man City fan. Messi's one of my favorite players by far in all of world football. Have his card in the background here. And I'd love to see him, him win um, an international competition in what's probably gonna be one of his last. He may play the next one, but he's gonna be 34, I think, maybe 35 by the time uh, the 2022 World Cup comes around. I'd like to see Argentina win, but I just think with how inconsistent they are, Spain are more likely to win. I think, yeah, more more likely than not, Spain sh would win this. But if Argentina play as well as they can, they could win it, but they just haven't played that well recently. So it's a hard one. I'd like to see Argentina go through, but they're not going to uh, with the prediction we're going with here. Next, we've got Brazil against Belgium. And this one's tricky. I think if Brazil have Neymar, such a good player, they would go through. If they don't have him, it's going to be a much closer contest. And it would be interesting to see Belgium go through because they have so many great players, the likes of Hazard, De Bruyne, Mertens, and Angolan. I've gone through some of them already. It would be great to see them go, go, go far in a competition, which they haven't really done recently. Um, but then Brazil... They, Brazil will really, really want to win this because they lost 7-1 to Germany in the last World Cup and that was a massive blow to them because obviously they were hosting it and um, that shocks a lot of people. So they'll really, really be going for it. I'm not sure. I think Brazil have more experience, especially internationally, with a lot of their players and I'm going to go with Brazil. Although that one would be a great game and uh, 
it really could go either way. And then we've got Germany against England, a repeat of the 1966 World Cup final. And uh, this is a massive game historically, Germany against England. I think Germany will win that. I mean, England could. Sometimes England play really well. I think they beat Germany in, in a friendly a couple of months ago. But yeah, I'm going to go with Germany there. I mean, those would be some really good course finals. We'd have a repeat of the Euros. We'd have Spain against Argentina, which would be a great game. Brazil against Belgium would be, would be pretty interesting. And then Germany against England. That's a really historic game. But I've gone with France, Spain, Brazil, and Germany going through to the semis with Portugal, Argentina, Belgium, and England all getting knocked out. Moving on to the semi-finals, we've got France against Brazil, which is a repeat of the 1998 final when France won it. And then we've also got Spain against Germany. So... France against Brazil, that's a hard one. That is a hard one. And it's just so hard to say. It's so hard to say because you could play this game like 10 times and five times France could win, five times Brazil could win. And yeah, it's, it's really hard. I think if, if Neymar's playing, it's obviously going to give Brazil a big boost. And uh, I'm going to go with Brazil. I'm going to go with Brazil. Although France have an amazing team, so do Brazil. And then Brazil have... The Neymar, who's just such a good player, who could who could pull them through and really carry them through. Obviously, France have Griezmann, they've got Pogba, they've got players like that, but they're not quite on the level of Neymar. But then Brazil don't have a proper out-and-out -out strike. I know they have Jesus, but he lacks experience. They have Firmino, but he again lacks kind of international experience. France have Griezmann, who was great in the last Euros. Um, I'm not sure. I'm going to go with Brazil. I'm going to go with Brazil, but that one's a really hard one. And then we've got Spain against Germany. This one's so hard to predict. I think this ended in a draw in the friendly about a week ago. It was a one all draw. Spain defensively are amazing. They've got De Gea, probably the best keeper in the world. This would have the two, arguably the two best keepers in the world playing this game. You'd have nowhere against De Gea. But obviously De Gea, Pique, Ramos, Alba, Carvajal in the midfield, Busquets, Thiago, David Silva... Iniesta and then going forward as well both of these teams have amazing squads um, and both lack a proper out and out world-class striker Timo Werner is very good but I don't think he's quite world-class yet um, I think Spain play they don't sometimes they play with Aspas up front sometimes Rodrigo neither of whom are properly world-class I'm not sure if Diego Costa I think yeah Costa does play for them Costa actually yeah Costa is is very good that one's hard I'm going to go with Spain. That would mean Germany, the defending champions, would go out. That one's really, really hard. Both of these semi-finals could go either way. And I'm, I'm just, yeah, I'm, I'm just going with one team. It could easily be the other one. So let me know down below who you think. But there we go. We've gone with Brazil and Spain getting through to the final. I'm not sure if that's been a, been a final in the past. With Germany and France getting knocked out. The final of the 2018 World Cup in Russia is going to be played between Brazil and Spain, according to these predictions anyway. Brazil and Spain, Brazil beating France and Spain going through against Germany. It could have easily been France against Germany, it could have been Brazil against Germany, it was really hard to pick those semi-finals, but in the end these are the ones I've gone with. And I think Spain are going to win the World Cup against Brazil if they play Brazil. I think Spain will win and there we go, we've got Spain as the winners there. And uh, I think it comes down to whether Neymar plays or not. Uh, maybe if Neymar doesn't play, France could get through to the final. I think Spain would probably beat France, although it's hard to say. It's very hard to say. Um, but uh, I think Spain have a great chance of winning. All the teams that have got through to the semi-finals do. I think the four that got through to the semis in these predictions are the four main standout favourites for the World Cup. Uh, they're the teams you'd expect to get this far. And I think that that's a that's easily a potential final we could see potential semi-finals too. You never know though. No one expected Iceland to do really well in the last Euros. Uh, no one expected uh, Costa Rica to do as well as they did in the World Cup or Colombia. It's hard to say. There could be a team that comes out of nowhere. Maybe Belgium, for example, could do really well and get to the final. Maybe Croatia. Maybe even England. You never know. Maybe Argentina. Argentina are definitely a team who could get to the semis and even to the final. So definitely don't. Uh, don't forget about them, and I'd love to see Argentina do really well in this World Cup. But yeah, I think Spain against Brazil, man for man, they probably have a better squad, especially defensively. Especially defensively, I'd say they have a better keeper in in De Gea. Defensively, with Ramos and Piquet, uh, there's a 
Obviously, great centre-back for Brazil too, but I'd say they, they just edge it there. Defensively, they have great full-backs too, both, both sides. Then in the midfield, I think that's really where Spain would win it because they'd have such good creative players with Thiago, Isco, David Silva, Iniesta as the four main ones. Um, having Busquets as that defensive player. And then, I um, mean, up front, you've got Rodrigo and Aspas and Costa, those other options there. Brazil obviously would have amazing attacking options with the likes of Jesus, Firmino, Neymar, Coutinho. It's so hard to pick. I've gone with Spain, but it could just as easily be Brazil. Let me know down below who you think is going to win the World Cup. I'll leave a link down below to the same prediction website I've used, and you can go through and do your own predictions and kind of see who you think will win using that. But yeah, so hard. It's so, so hard to predict. So hard. I think it, it's going to be between Brazil, Spain, Germany, France, and Argentina. And maybe Belgium or a team like that could get through. But it's just so hard to predict. You never know. Some teams are more consistent than others. Some teams could be amazing in the World Cup who weren't that good in qualifying, like Argentina, for example. I don't know. So hard to predict. But anyway, hope you guys have enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to leave a like on it. Go and check out Vizzers down below too. He's the person who inspired me to make this video. Um, but yeah, let me know who you think is going to win the World Cup. Who's going to be the player of the tournament, in your opinion? I think it's going to be Messi. I think it... No, but if it's Messi, Argentina will get to the semis. I, I don't... I, let's go with David Silva. That, that, yeah. I'm going to go with David Silva. If, if Spain gets to the final, I think Silva will be that man carrying them. Because he's been on a really good form recently. But anyway, hope you guys enjoy. And I'll see you later. Take care.